everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my twin girls three month update and because I haven't done a single one of these updates I will be talking about basically their lives up until this point so from zero to three months. Now one of my little nuggets is awake and she is beside me so if you see me kind of look down she's probably who I'm looking at if you hear cute little baby noises that's also where that's coming from. She's awake. Then when you have twins, you just take the opportunities that you can because she's pretty calm right now. Her sister's asleep. I'm keeping an eye on her sister in the monitor and I'm just going to try to get through as much of this as I can. I did film this whole video already and I found out that only a few minutes actually recorded on the camera. So that basically made me shed some tears. Not actually, but I felt like crying because it's hard enough to get a video in as it is, never mind actually managing to get it in, only to find out that you didn't really because you didn't catch it on camera. So I'm hoping I can remember all my funny anecdotes and repeat the whole process for you right now. So starting from the beginning, we did have a three-day stay in NICU. I talk about that in my labor and delivery story. Um, in the previous video, if you haven't already seen that video, I will link to it somewhere here or maybe in the description box, go check it out. Um, but basically the first month of their lives was pretty much all of the same thing and it was just eating and sleeping, eating and sleeping. Um, so that's the newborn phase for you. I don't know if our newborn phase lasted a little bit longer than maybe um, a mother that had a baby at term. Ours were three weeks early and I think that did impact us in the beginning, especially because they were so small. It was all about how much food I could get into them. Um, and in the newborn phase, what I didn't know is that you actually have to wake them up to feed them. I just assume, oh, a baby's hungry. It's going to tell you whether it's crying or fussing or what have you. And it's like, no, no, they will sleep through it in the beginning. So I had an alarm set like every three hours to make sure that every three hours they were eating. For Grace, it was particularly important because she was on the smaller side. She was smaller than her sister Olivia was. Um, when we took her home, she was under five pounds and the doctors really wanted to make sure that she was gaining weight. Um, they have a limit on how much weight um, a baby can lose after they're born uh, before they start intervening and she was getting really really close to that so we had to really make sure but she was super super sleepy it was very hard to get her to wake up to eat and when she did wake up she was never really fully awake and so it was a matter of like forcing this food on her which was really difficult because she was never eating in those first few weeks the amount that the doctors wanted her to be eating based on her weight and based on the amount that they wanted her to gain. So that was a real challenge in the beginning. Um, also I was not sleeping in the beginning. I was basically a zombie because the process of feeding twins when I was trying to breastfeed but also not producing enough milk was like super challenging. So basically I would take one of the girls, I would put them to the breast, try to get them to eat, but because I wasn't producing enough and my milk took a long time to come in, they weren't getting enough. So then you'd have to give them a bottle of formula to supplement what they weren't getting from my breast. And then when that process was done with the first baby, you would bring the second baby in and start the process over again. And then when that was all done, I had to pump because I was trying to increase my supply and I was trying to give them as much breast milk as I possibly could. So basically that whole process took a minimum of two hours. Hours. Now I'm saying a minimum of two hours with help. So at night when you're, you're supposed to f be feeding them every three hours, my husband would help and thank goodness for that because if he didn't, I don't think I would have slept at all. That first like first newborn phase, we were lucky to be getting 45 minutes at a time. Uh, that was like a good night. You know, you got a 45 minute chunk of sleep before you had to start feeding again. It was like a good night. So you can just imagine like I was not myself. I was hormonal. I was emotional. Um, just the natural Thing that most women go through after they're pregnant but plus I wasn't sleeping like to like such degree uh, and that didn't really change until I decided to stop trying to put them on the breast and exclusively pump um, and that saved me some serious time and allowed us to feed them both from a bottle whether it was breast milk or supplemented formula uh, at night at the same time and get to bed sooner so that was giving us closer to an hour an hour and a half at a time of sleep and that really really helped in terms of me being a human being and my husband being a human being in the daytime because it, we were just zombies zombies for the first little bit so that kind of covers the first month honestly there's not much to say about it except that we were trying to get the babies to gain weight and that was like a major thing of our first month and other than that they were just kind of sleeping for most of the time um, in the second month and now in the third month they're definitely more alert more awake um, they're interacting more and it's so much more fun not that the newborn phase isn't like 
cute and like their newborns are super teeny tiny but they don't really care who you are when they're newborn as long as they're getting fed they don't care they don't know really that you're their parents so like while there is a bonding thing because they're they're your child obviously you're bonded to them I feel so much like that bonding is like taken to a new level now that they look at me and smile at me and starting to like recognize who I am and like maybe learn a little bit like I'm their mom and I'm sure they don't grasp that yet but I am the woman with the bottle and I'm the one that's there basically 24 7 so every time I see them and come in in the morning they're now really smiley and it's super cute and they're starting to really show their different personalities which is also super fun to watch Grace is super chill relaxed you can like she'll let you do anything she doesn't care she barely cries if she's crying she's hurting she's tired she's hungry and even that she just kind of gives these warning cries like she'll be like meh and then she'll give you a few minutes to get to her and if you don't get to her she'll give you another like little bleat and then she'll start crying so it's really like funny if she if I just had grace it would be like the easiest parenting thing in the world she is so relaxed and so easy to take care of Olivia is my little drama queen. She is a screamer. She loves to scream. She loves to yell. Even when you burp her, you take the bottle away for like a second and she is screaming bloody murder in your ear like you're going to never give it back to her and she's never had a meal before in her life. That's what it's like. So it's so funny. I think they're really going to balance themselves, like each other out, sorry. They're going to balance each other out as they get older. So as far as weight goes, Grace is definitely catching up. She started off not even on the growth curve. So like the doctors in the beginning, there's this like curve that they want the babies to follow. Any other parents out there, I'm sure know exactly what I'm talking about. Grace was like below it. She wasn't even close to it. She wasn't touching this curve at all. Now some of that is because she has Down syndrome. She, she is growing at a slower rate according to the doctors but like that was just in the beginning right now she is like growing faster than her sister she is putting on weight like crazy she's such a great eater now that she's more awake uh, definitely not seeing the same problems that we did in the first couple weeks of her life so at last check she was 11 pounds and 9 ounces and her sister was 12 pounds exactly so because Grace has Down syndrome, she has lower muscle tone than her sister. So basically she has to work a little bit harder to hit all of her like physical development milestones. Um, but she is such a trooper. She's trying so hard. She definitely like is not one baby to give up. She wants to do what she wants to do. So we are like hitting milestones. Uh, she's doing really well. The doctors have been so impressed with her tone actually. Um, she was the first to roll over at six weeks, which was super impressive. I thought six weeks was early like for any baby, but especially for her, it just like was such a great achievement for her. The doctors were so surprised. Uh, they basically told me when the girls were born not to ever compare Grace to Olivia uh, because of the Down syndrome, not that you should ever compare a child to another because they always like develop and hit things at different rates every child is different um, but especially with them they were like don't compare them don't be discouraged like basically grace will never hit a milestone first olivia will hit all of her milestones before her sister and like don't let that get you down so i was like oh okay like I wasn't planning on comparing them anyway, but I guess thanks for the heads up. So when she did that first, I screamed. I was so excited and basically scared the crap out of her. And she's probably like, what the hell? And then I was wondering, like, maybe this was a fluke, but it totally wasn't. She uh, was rolling over a couple times a week for three weeks before her sister managed to do it one time. So... I was so proud of her just like so excited so for sleeping arrangements when we first brought them home we did have them in a pack and play and they were sharing the pack and play in like the bassinet setting and we had them in our bedroom and we kept them in our bedroom for about two months and that was about the extent that I could do that because every little noise that they made in their sleep like we're talking not when they're trying to get up like just like you know the regular sleep sounds that babies can make was waking me up because I was just like so alert and like so wanting to listen to them that I was not having great sleeps so at two months we did move them to their own room um, so occasionally we had them in the rock and play as well now before I had the girls I was like I will never let them sleep in that thing I know it's not doctor recommended yada 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 I know a lot of parents do it but I'm not going to be that parent and they should sleep on their backs okay there are a lot of things that you think that you're going to do or that I thought I was going to do as a parent <laughs> that once the babies are here it's like Plans change. Babies have a way of changing plans. So we have had them in the rock and plays occasionally for sleeping because they had reflux. Both of them had reflux pretty bad. And so 
it got to the point where putting them on the back, you could tell how uncomfortable they were, that they were not, like, probably in quite a bit of pain, because acid reflux is not comfortable for anyone. So they just felt so much more comfortable and had such better sleeps in the rock and play. So it's not that we had them in it all the time, every time, but definitely they were having some naps and some overnight sleeps in the rock and play for a little while. So when we transitioned them to their room, we they each have their own crib and we put them in their own crib and they just were not sleeping. And so at first I was like, oh, it's because they're separated now and they're so used to being around each other. Um, I'm going to put them back together in the same crib, but they were having the same problem. They still weren't sleeping. So I'm like, okay, it's not that they're separated. Um, I think that the, they needed to be close together only when they were first born. Like when they were like a week old, we would put them on separate ends of the pack and play and by the morning they had like scooted themselves closer together. Not like touching or super close that I was worried, but like they would both like their heads would look at each other and they would just like find a way. I watched it happen once. They just kind of like wiggle and they would wiggle closer to each other. It was like super impressive considering how young they were. Um, but yeah, they, that kind of, now they won't even look at each other. So it's really funny how that happens. <laughs> They're not needing to be next to each other all the time. So that wasn't the issue for sleeping. So one day I put them down for a nap in the crib, trying again to transition them to the crib. And I was watching them as they were like waking up and they would like, even though they were swaddled, they would start to like move a little. And it's almost like they were aware that they were in this big open space because compared to the crib, they were pretty little and they would start to get increasingly agitated and then just start thrashing and they would wake each other, like not wake each other, like wake themselves up. So we ended up investing in two Daca Tots, which again was something I was like, I will never buy one of those things because they're outrageously expensive. And they are, they're super expensive. And I'm not even sure I would recommend them to other moms, although they have worked super well for us. And the reason I'm saying I don't know if I'd recommend them is purely based on the cost because if you look them up online, if you've ever looked them up online, it's like, what am I paying for? It's basically just like a little bed. It looks like you could put a, like a pool noodle <laughs> and make the same thing. Obviously don't do that. It's not safe. But uh, yeah, so we ended up getting Dr. Tots and putting them in the crib. And since doing that, like it was amazing. The first night we put them in there, they slept so well and so I don't regret the purchase I should have done it sooner because then I would have gotten more use out of it um, but yeah that price but it's working really well for us and so as they outgrow that um, I think that I'm gonna just transition them to the bed like in a few months but right now Basically, I want to use it for as long as I can just to get my money's worth. They are actually sleeping through the night as of a week and a half ago, they have been sleeping through the night and the first night that they did it, I woke up in the morning at like 5 a.m. being so confused, wondering why I hadn't woken up to fed the girls, thinking maybe my husband got up in the middle of the night and fed them and didn't wake me up to help or it didn't wake me up at all. But then he woke up and he's like, what's going on? And we were both like super confused. Um, I talked to many people about this, like including the doctor, being like, what? is going on like is it okay that they're sleeping through the night because it seems like it's kind of early for them to be sleeping through the night and I was worried about them and basically it was like no their weight is good if they're not waking up to tell you they're hungry at this point like we're past the newborn phase where you have to wake them up and they would sleep through their hunger like if they're hungry now they will wake up so if they're sleeping through the night like let it happen and enjoy it so we're going now 12 hour stretches most days from like 6 30 to 6 30 like asleep. Well, not asleep. We start feeding them at 6.30 at night. So by the time we actually put them down, it's around 7.30, but then they sleep until 6.30. It's amazing. Also, my babies are still being swaddled. We've been using um, a product called Love to Dream, which allows them to like hold their hands up and self-soothe. So it gives them enough like movement that they can bring their hands to their mouth through the material, but not so much that they can startle themselves awake. Um, and my girls have been loving it. And we tried a bunch of different things when they were new, like blankets, Velcro swaddles. We tried a bunch of different products and just nothing was working. They were breaking out of the blanket swaddles, like no matter how hard or like tight we swaddled them. Grace is like a little Houdini. One morning I found her um, with one arm on top of a Velcro swaddle and one arm under. So she was kind of like in this really contorted position and but she was asleep. She wasn't uncomfortable, she never cried out. But after that I was like, we're done with this product. Like she can get out, that did not look safe to me. And so we got this Love to Dream 
product and I was like well their arms aren't down like is that gonna work but they love it I just bought the next size up which has zippered sleeves so now I can start transitioning them out of a swaddle which I think I'll start in a couple weeks so Olivia also loves her soother she's loved it from day one we have this really cute video of her in the NICU um, with the newborn soother and those things are teeny tiny but like they were so small that thing is still like half her face and she's just going to town on the soother and she has been taking the soother ever since we do use it to help put her to sleep as well um, I think I'm gonna have to start transitioning her away from that because it's waking her up like we're getting to a point where she'll fall asleep with the soother and then at some point like it falls out of her mouth and then it kind of like falls on either side of her head and she rolls on it and it's uncomfortable and it wakes her up and I think the sleep training books as well say that you should be transitioned away from the soother at least for fall, needing it to fall asleep before you start sleep training. Grace we don't have a problem because she never really took it although I wanted her to because one of like we've been told by a few nurses and doctors that like the sucking on the soother um, can help improve the muscle tone in her mouth and her like cheeks and jaw which will help with feeding like eating solid foods later on and also speech development so we've been kind of like forcing it on her but she has never really liked it from the beginning like if it's not a bottle if it's not giving her mouth milk she doesn't want it like it's hilarious to watch her she'll take the soother because she thinks oh I'm getting a bottle and then she like gives you this look like when she realizes she's not getting milk out of it like what are you doing what have you put in my mouth what is this and then once she realizes for sure like this is not my bottle she starts like making this gag face like get it out she's trying to like spit the soother out it's pretty funny but uh, now that she's gotten a little bit older she will take it for a few minutes although she's still trying to master the art of like sucking on the soother without her tongue accidentally pushing it out um, so she never holds on to it by herself for more than a few minutes at a time both of them are starting to coo and make a lot more noises and like smile they're not really giggling yet I can't wait for that phase um, but definitely big smiles uh, they're also starting to really look at things um, so they've been looking around for a little while but like sometimes they get fixated on something and especially if it's something they can touch they you can tell that they're looking and they're starting to with intention like swat at things and sometimes grab them which is super like neat to see and they're starting really to pay attention attention to faces and like interact so it's been like a really fun experience to like watch them look at things and you get to see the world almost through their eyes again because now I'm paying attention to what they're paying attention to like both of them love the chandelier in our living room for some reason they can stare at that thing for like 15 minutes at a time they just love it like why buy toys when the chandelier is basically their favorite thing in the house right now so at three months I stopped pumping entirely it got to the point where it was just not sustainable with my schedule and with their schedule um, it got very hard to keep up with and basically the only few minutes in a day that I had free I was using them to pump and I just was miserable with that because like I literally had no time to eat and it, it was super hard so I made the decision took on serious mom guilt even though I know that it was the best decision for me and the best decision for my family you can't help but feel guilty you know how important breastfeeding is and them getting breast milk but to remind myself that fed is best and like to let that go and since I have like stopped pumping everyone's been a lot happier mainly because mommy's a lot happier um, so they are exclusively formula fed at this point in time and they're doing really well on that it was just the right thing to do so they are eating machines machines they just like it's so impressive I feel like they can down a bottle that's the size of them I have no idea where this milk is going they are going like crazy so clearly they need it so this video is getting super super long so I'm gonna like stop right now I will be doing more videos about the girls if you have any questions about things that I might not have talked about in this video please feel free to reach out to me below I do love to hear from you and I will answer any questions that you may have and I will see you in the next video bye